Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to church. The place is buzzing. I think Christmas is near. Do you think so? Well, yeah. who who likes Christmas? I sure hope we all do. Uh, <laughs> most of the kids like Christmas. Yeah, the adults aren't sure. Well, it's it's been a morning already. It has. <laughs> so, so we've got a few announcements that need to go out. It's, it's going to be a busy day. Yes. We have church, and then we have our Christmas potluck. T Phew. Tonight. Tonight at 5 p.m. If you are signed up, you are welcome to attend. Unfortunately, if you didn't sign up, you next year. Sound good? Well, I think okay. you might be able to sign can up. Can you? If you it's can still out there. sign up today. Okay. If it's out there. Good. Phew. So... Let's watch some video announcements and we will continue on with the service. Good morning, Estenful Gospel. We are so glad that you could join us and Merry Christmas. <laughs> welcome to church. If you haven't been with us before, make sure you fill out a welcome card with your information. As well, if you're interested in volunteering or getting baptized or you have a prayer request, Fill this out and your contact information and put it in the offering plate. That's what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> Today is our church potluck. Excellent. Our Christmas potluck. And we are so excited that we are able to go ahead with this. Mm -hmm. A couple of things you need to know. You must sign up yes. to come to this event. It's a sign up event only. So once the sheet is taken down after church this morning, we can't allow anyone else to come. Yeah. And if you are cooking a turkey for us, that needs to be to the church by 3.30. And it doesn't need to be cut up. Okay. Bring it whole and we have people that will cut it up here. It's going to be an excellent evening uh, sharing a meal together. Yes, it'll be wonderful. As well, we are excitedly planning the Christmas Eve service. Yeah. It's going to be a great event. Uh, just a nice candlelight service, lots mm. of specials. That's 7 p.m. on obviously the 24th of December. That's right. <laughs> and the last day to give in the calendar year 2021 is going to be December 31st. Go figure. <laughs> the church office will be open until noon that day. So if you have any year-end giving that you need to catch up on, please do that before noon on December 31st. Well, I think that's everything, except today is going to be fun. Yeah, today's going to be lots of fun celebrating. The kids have some exciting stuff to share with you, so it's going to be a good day celebrating. We wish you a very Merry Christmas. We hope that this season is filled with joy, peace, love, and hope. Hope. <laughs> and Jesus. That too. Merry Christmas. For the slave is our birth. It's going to be a great day. As we open our service, I'd invite you to stand with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today that we can be here joining together, worshiping you, celebrating uh, your first coming. God, I pray that today will be fun, that we would catch a little glimpse of your heart and your joy in these children. God, as we sing songs to you, that you would be exalted in everything that we sing and in the way that we uh, participate today. We pray that you would be glorified in everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, sing with me, O come all ye faithful. O come all ye
Nancy and Miss Shanae are going to get them set up. Come on up and find your spot where you were when we practiced. Come on up. The first song we're going to sing is called Nativity. Then we're going to sing Light of the World. And then we're going to sing Go Tell It on the Mountain. So we hope you enjoy.
job. Okay, the kids are going to come with us, teachers, and we're going to go have a little Christmas party. Parents, you can pick them up in the purple room at the end of church. Didn't they do a good job? Woohoo! Excellent. Can you hear me? No? Not yet, eh? Hey? That was excellent. We should get them back at the end of church to sing them again. Probably not. They're going to be busy playing games and running around. Well, we have, we're in the season of Advent. It, we have spent three weeks talking about different themes of Advent, and the past three Sundays we've talked about what Emmanuel means and what Emmanuel brings. Emmanuel means God is with us. And our sermon series is God with us. And then we've talked about how it brings hope, how it brings peace, and how it brings joy. Just checking my time. All right, I got got like an hour and a half to preach here. Sorry, this morning has been running around, there we go, running around fixing technical difficulties. Uh... Currently, our live stream isn't working, so we're going we're gonna to post it later uh, for anybody who wants to watch it again, to watch the kids. But this morning has been all about tech problems, and now I'm going to preach. So those are all the things that are running through my head right now, So if you're wondering. So I just need to stop, and I'll pray, and then I'll preach, hopefully. Jesus, thank you for today. God, I pray that this time uh, that we hear from your word, that it would just touch our hearts today, help me to be able to focus my mind and my heart on you, and that we would walk away, uh, be coming closer to you and looking more like you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. Last week I wasn't here. I was in Medicine Hat. What a great place to be on a Sunday at a hockey tournament, but I had I, would have, I, I enjoyed watching church on my phone from my hotel room. And I watched Matt preach on joy. And he did an excellent job. And this is our last Sunday leading up to uh, Christmas Eve. We have our Christmas Eve service, as I said in our announcements, on the 24th. Go figure at 7 p.m. And you're all welcome to come. It's going to be a good time. And we'll be hearing different people share Uh, carols and Christmas songs, as well as reading the Christmas story. So if you're not doing anything at 7 o'clock Christmas Eve, you should come. It's only about 45 minutes, and then we close off the night singing Silent Night with candles. Have you ever had that overwhelming fear or, or trepidation? Have you ever experienced that in your life? Overwhelming fear or trepidation? I've had it a couple of times. It's usually when I'm standing on the top of a ladder. Uh, I don't climb ladders. I'm scared of heights. And I've told a few stories about that. Uh, Climbing a tree and jumping out and uh, elbow dropping my dad and breaking his nose and blinding him for about 25 minutes. Um, Completely by accident because I was scared. But, you know, lots of people are afraid of different things. Lots of people have fear in their lives. Um, some people are afraid of public speaking. I'm not. Uh, some, some are afraid of heights, enclosed spaces. What about um, being singled out or pointed out? What about the fear of not being in control? And some people are afraid of balloons. It's called globophobia. Go figure. My mom has an irrational fear of snakes. And so as a child, I capitalized on that. Um, we, you know, my mom would clean the living room every, every week, and one time there, we had 
these rubber snakes, right? Everybody has rubber snakes. You would go to Zellers and buy rubber snakes, and so or Woolworths. And um, so I'd buy these rubber snakes, and I would hide them around my house. And one time, one happened to be underneath the, the couch cushion. I don't know how it got there. My mom was vacuuming the living room, and she pulled the couch cushion off to vacuum it, and there was a perfectly coiled up snake, rubber snake, and she screamed and threw the vacuum. Um, another time, we uh, put them in her jewelry box. We had these little ones, and when she opened her jewelry box, uh, well, I'm surprised I didn't get beat more. <laughs> Anyways, my mom has an irrational fear of snakes. Um, and we would terrorize her. But, you know, some of these things are trivia, trivial. They don't, they don't really matter all that much. But fear is something that each one of us faces. And some fears can be debilitating. You probably know what I'm talking about. You and I, we, we all have fear. We all have fear in our life, whether we like it or not. And the Christmas story has moments of fear, real fear, for those who were involved. There are three occasions in the Christmas story where an angel appears and says, Fear not. That's the King James Version. It's authorized. Fear not. The New Living Translation, NIV, they say, Do not be afraid. If an angel is saying... Fear not. Do not be afraid. There must be something to be afraid of. Now, it might be the very appearance of an angel. That could be uh, what causes the fear. If you turn with me in Luke 2, we'll go to Luke 2, chapter, or chapter 2, yeah, verses 8 through 15. And it goes like this. That night there were some shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep, paying their own attention, not doing anything except for guarding sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Do not be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born to you in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those who with whom God is pleased. When the angels returned returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So the shepherds weren't expecting this. It's not like they were sitting there looking at their watches going, okay, any time now an angel is going to appear. They weren't expecting an announcement of any type that night. The very appearance of these heavenly beings probably caused them to need to change their tunics because these were just lowly shepherds just watching sheep they weren't important just watching sheep yeah and the angel says do not be afraid fear not fear not We know that their fear turns to joy and that they go praising God in the end. But the fear that they experienced would have been unimaginable. Can you imagine it? And this is before drones and things like that in the sky. The second instance where an angel says fear not is found in Matthew's Gospel. Chapter 1. And I'm reading from verses 19 to 23. <clears throat> it says this. Joseph, 
to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her, talking about Mary, publicly. So he decided to, engage, to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. All this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through the prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. Joseph, he seems like a good guy. He seems like an honorable guy. And he finds out that his fiance is pregnant. And not with his child, I might add. And we know that story. But can you imagine all the fear that's going through his mind and all the fear that's going through his heart at that moment? All the, the different things that would be associated with him breaking off the engagement or going through with the marriage. Raising a son or a child that isn't, isn't yours. What would people say about him? What would people say about his family? All these fears would be rolling around in his head. And then the angel says, did you catch it? He said, fear not. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Again, calming the fears in his heart. And the third instance of fear I want to look at is found in, back in Luke 1. And this is Mary. And it says in verse 26, it says this. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think of what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her. For you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, But how can all this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby will be born, the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. The fears that Mary have are very tangible. She is a pregnant teen. And it's miraculous, right? That's what everybody in town is saying. Yeah, it's miraculous. I know I said I was a mother a couple weeks ago completely by accident. But she's, she's going to be the mother of a child that... She doesn't even know what's going on. This, she could be disowned by her family. The, the engagement would most certainly be broken off. And she would be alone to raise this baby. Most likely in extreme poverty if her family didn't care for her, if they didn't disown her. She has real fears. And the fear of nine months of pregnancy, I've never had to experience that. Just, like I said, I'm not a mother. 
But like the others, the angel tells her to fear not. Do not be afraid, Mary. All of these situations around Christ's birth had an element of fear and unknown to them. Now, Merry Christmas. We can all go home now. We've talked about fear. That's the the fourth theme for Advent. You might be wondering why I'm talking about fear. I mean, hope, joy, peace, and fear don't really roll off the tongue. The fact is that just like the people facing these events, how they have fear in their lives, we will experience fear in our lives. And we need to know the answer to that fear. We need to know the answer to fear. The angel encouraged those he visited to not be afraid because of the news that would change the world. This baby would change the world. Would be a a gift, a perfect gift of love. God with us brings love. John, the writer of uh, the Gospel of John, understood that Christ was God's gift to the world. John 3.16, the most quoted verse in the world, says, For God so loved. He loved. That what? He hoarded it to himself. No, he gave. He gave his one and only son. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus was God's gift of love for us. And if you read in 1 John 4, verses 16 to 18, it says, We know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in his love. God is love. I've spoken on love three times since grad Sunday. This is the third time. And I said a couple weeks ago, I won't preach on love anymore this year. God is love. And all who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus is here in the world. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. I've always been afraid of getting expelled, but I think this is the kind of expulsion that I need in my life. Perfect love expels all fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. It drives it away because there's no room for it. Some people think that the opposite of fear is courage, and while that's probably true, I believe that the opposite of fear is love. Have you ever seen the news stories where someone will run into a burning building to save the ones that they love, or they will crawl through rubble to save someone, or back into a scene of an accident? I would climb the scariest ladder to save my kids from danger. That is what the first Christmas was. God so loved. He met us in the midst of our fear and gave us his perfect love, Jesus, who would grow to be a man and give his life for our sins, forever defeating sin, death, and fear. This morning, I I don't know what you might be facing in your life. I don't know what you're going through, but God does. I don't know what you're afraid of, afraid of but the Holy Spirit knows and God gave us that gift 2,000 years ago Jesus to be the perfect love that casts out all fear and that love is available for each one of us today some of us have experienced it some of us still need to experience it so when we say Emmanuel, God with us. We're saying that God is with us, that his perfect love is with us. And his perfect love casts out 
fear. God with us brings love to conquer our fears, that we might walk in victory with him. God with us brings hope, peace, joy, and love. And on Christmas Eve, God with us brings Jesus. So whatever you're going through today, whatever fears you have, I would encourage you to turn those over to Christ. And let his perfect love cast out, expel, drive away all your fear. Romans 8 39 says, No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you today for your love. Thank you for the love that you have for us, so much so that you gave And you didn't withhold anything. You gave your son for us. Because of love. Lord, I pray that today, those of us that are facing different trials in our lives would rest in that perfect love that casts out all fear. God, those that are dealing with different situations, would be able to rest in your hope, in your peace, in your joy, and in your love this day. That we would be able to turn that over to you. And God, that we would be able to celebrate together your first coming, seeing what you did for us. God, I pray that you would go with us today. That you would lead us that our lives would look more like you. And as some of us come back tonight and gather for a meal, that you'd be glorified in the midst of that. Jesus, thank you for your love that took you to the cross for us. God, I pray that that would be revealed in our lives today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. It was great to have you out. It was great to have the kids. It was great to have the Foxshoff trio. If you're coming back this evening, our potluck is at 5, and we're excited that you're able to join us. Please, if, you're, if you are feeling sick or anything like that, do not come. Uh, we want to keep people as safe as possible, but we also want to have a good time. Our service is dismissed. Parents, go pick up your kids. Parents, adults, if you don't have kids, you're lucky. God bless. Our service is dismissed. From sea to circle.